Wow, what a mess this tabletop is in today. It's because we got a lot of data to go through here to get the next step done. We're going to work on putting the wing actually onto the body, which this is one of those kind of precision areas. This is where if you're going to screw up, don't be it here because we've got too many different things going on. You could, you could mess up a lot of parts on a model airplane and it'll still fly fairly decently. But if this one is not done right, it's going to create some weird problems with your trim tabs when it comes time to fly it. So anyways, my name's Dan. This is my shop. And uh, this is where we're building, scratch building Orion's Rebel. We're down to the step of actually putting the wing onto the body. And uh, you got to do it right. You got to work hard to get it so that the angle's correct. And you also got to make sure the wing is centered up correctly. So let's go ahead and get started on that. And then uh, we'll look at actually putting the wing mounting materials into the wings and get that sucker bolted down. This is the, oh, this is the uh, wing looking down part of the plan. And this is what I'm most interested in today is the plotting of these holes here, because those are going to be the front screws on there. I've gone ahead and basically what I did was I just measured them out from the wing tip uh, to the center of the hole and then center of center to the hole. And came up with roughly these markings. I know that there's quite a bit of markings there, but it's these uh, little black dots that I put to the front here. That's where the actual position of these holes should be. And that was the first step. The second part that we need to look at is down here. This is the side plot that shows us exactly how that screw is supposed to go in. I didn't like it either because I like the screw to sit flush with the surface. However, this one here shows that it is not flush with the surface and it's got a good reason why not because I figured it out. If you go flush with this screw, it will actually angle it back in and we've got two spars in the wing down here inside this block. There's one here and one up here. Now, obviously with the positioning of that dot that we put over there, I'm not going to hit this spar, but this one here once I go flush with that, angles right into the edge of it. Eh, it's just stupid. So, anyways, I'm not liking the way this is going to go, but this is something i got to be conscious of to put this screw basically straight down shot. And then in the wing is the rail that we're going to be making out of this material here, which is maple block. And that'll rest in the wing and we'll actually tap this piece of wood so that this screw can go into it and that'll be the hold down block. That's what I've been working on in my mind how to get this all done. Um, it's This is probably one of the more precision parts of the plane to get done because not only do we have to get the wing into the saddle perfectly, but then we also have to put these uh, parts into place. The screw going through and then, of course, making sure that it mates up with the block correctly underneath it. That is the mission. Okay, I'm going to get you up to where we are at this point, being able to put the wing centered perfectly onto the mount, uh, now ready to bolt right through it and get it all fully mounted down and secure exactly in the position it's at. That was a lot of words for getting that said, but here is what basically you need to do to this point. The important thing is that we've got the mount uh, of the wing mounted two different ways correctly. The first way is we want to make sure that we've got the wing. First of all, the wing fits into the saddle nicely. Uh, that took some shaping of the back edges and stuff like that so that the wing would drop down and basically sit squarely on the saddle. That was the first step. Second step is you need to measure the wing end to end so that you're putting the exact center of the wing on the exact center datum line of the fuselage. That's important too. You don't want to have the wing be longer to one side than the other. It's got to be centered up perfectly. And it's kind of deceptive here because you think, oh, I can just look at the sheeting here and that line has got to be the center. But the problem is sometimes when you're sheeting, um, it'll actually hang over a little bit more to one side than the other so it doesn't like get on the exact true center. So what you want to do is get out the old measuring tape and make sure that you've got the exact center point of this wing due to the measurement from one end to the other. So we've got that centered up and that's what I did 
next. Now the last thing you want to do is you want to get the wing set up correctly laterally. So that means you want to have it so that it is definitely in the saddle here and you don't want to have it, you know, tipped one way or another. That's just uh, not the direction. If you mess that up, it's going to really mess up your trim when you're flying the plane because the wing will be, you know, slightly off cock. It'll be centered to the here, but it could be just, little, you know, halfway uh, one way to the other. And the way that you end up doing this kind of testing is you go out to the wing tips and what I do is I come back here and I'll put a uh, one of my pins, the, one of the uh, pins that we used to hold down the sheeting with, I'll go ahead and put that exactly in the middle on that datum line in the back here. And then I will measure from the wing tips from one side and I'll do the exact same thing from the wing tip on the other side to there and I will slightly move this thing until it is absolutely perfect. And then at that point, we get to the final step and you can see I've already done it here. On the wing tip right here, on the very tip, I've got a, a mark that I put with a Sharpie. And that mark needs to line up directly with this mark of this Sharpie. And it did the same thing in the back. So when it comes time to go ahead and mount the final uh, screws into the wood, all I have to do after all that work that I did to get all those measurements exactly right, make sure the wing was exactly in the right place. And we're talking very slight movements, maybe like uh, one thirty second this way. Oh, just very small movements can move the entire wing tip a half inch or a quarter of an inch out on the ends. So once everything was done, I lined it up and then I made a uh, Sharpie mark here and one in the back. So now with these in place, I can easily take the wing off and put it back on and be able to get it lined up exactly perfect. Now, just for fun, I will go back and verify to make sure the measurements are still the same, but should be there right now. So the next part is the fun part. We've got to drill these holes down through the wing. These will be the holes that the bolts are going to pass through and they are quarter by 20. So in order to get that to work correctly so that we can tap the block underneath it to a quarter by 20, the drill size hole, there's the bit, uh, the drill has to be 1364. Now that's smaller than one quarter and the reason why is that this will be the pilot hole that we drill. What I want to do is put the hole straight down into here and then we're going to put the block into the saddle underneath it and then I'll redrill drill straight down through these holes again to make sure we get proper alignment. Then once that's done we'll bore these out to one quarter, the wing top ones, but the bottom ones will be tapped to one quarter by 20. Got all that? All right, here we go. Now these we figured out need to be vertically done. So on my drill, it's got this little center bubble thing. What I'm gonna do is it needs to be straight down shot into the wing. So what we're gonna do is get that right into the center of the level and wish me the best of luck. So we're gonna start with that one and that is pretty well centered. So we'll go ahead and just goose the drill. I didn't feel it hit any solid objects like a spar going down through there. I consider that a good thing. Let's go ahead and try it again on side B here. Okay, and there we have it. We now have a drilled through wing. Pop that up and see what that, okay. 
came through looking like on the other side. Yeah, you can see the holes right there came in. We'll clean that up a little bit, but uh, everything got done correctly so far. So next step is going to be to set up the um, mounting bar that goes across here. And the trick's gonna be to try to get it lined up correctly with this. I've got an idea. Uh, I'll go ahead and get the bar cut out here pretty quick and then we'll work on making it so we can align these holes perfectly into the center of the bar. All right, I hope you can see this. Um, what I've done at this point is I went ahead and cut, this is gonna be the rail that the, uh, that the taps are gonna go into. And what I did was I went ahead and cut it so that it fits in there, it is super snug. It's, it's, I did it on purpose so that I'd be able to move it because I'm going to try to see if I could center up these holes uh, right onto it. I wanna to try to make them so they land right in the middle. I don't want them to be you know, toward one end or the other or cockamamie. I don't know, that's the word I, my grandma used to use that word, word cockamamie. Anyways, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna to test to see how well these things are gonna line up with that. I'm totally guessing where this rail goes at this point. So I'm gonna use my old buddy, This remember this stuff? He used this carbon paper for part of the tracing of the parts of the plans. What I'm gonna do is just drop that in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and reseat the saddle the way it's supposed to be. Line up all the marks correctly. And that one's not there, here we go. Okay, get them all shoved down the way they're supposed to be. I'm gonna take the drill bit and go ahead and push it down through the wing. And I wanna take and hopefully impress a mark onto that board. There we go, I could feel it, I hit it. That thing's sharp. This is kind of a dumb idea. <laughs> I guess I should get like a 13 64th rod, but who has one of those laying around? Okay, I'll go ahead and push this down in there. And I think I'm on the paper. So I'll go ahead and move that so that let's see if we make a mark. And see if it worked. Okay, yes. Did leave a mark. Let's see if I can get this zipped around here so you can see it. Yeah, see those marks there? Okay, so what this is telling me is this where I've got it, who would actually move this one. Where I've got it, you can see that it, they're kind of up in the front of it. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and eek this up uh, about, yeah, it looks like it needs to be moved forward. See, these were marks, I put these marks to establish this starting point uh, based on the plans. I just measured from this bulkhead to here, it came to be like one and one sixteenth. So what I figured out now is it looks like I need to move it back about one, or move it forward about one eighth. And then this rail, I can go ahead and glue it and uh, drill those through it and we can move on to the next part. Okay, it's time for the truth segment here. I totally blew this cover. I mean, I, pl I blew this entire step. And so now what I wanna do is tell you what happened here. All right, so that was the piece that I had in place and I glued it in. And remember how I was trying to, when I made the initial marks up here, I decided I wanted to move the whole rail forward a little bit and start the marks in the middle. That was the issue. I forgot something. I forgot that the way that this is angled, what would happen if I were to make the holes where I did, which I did, I went ahead and drilled them. I mean, I got the whole thing on film of me screwing up, but I'm just gonna save you from that. Anyhow, uh, what happened is I drilled the holes and they ended up being closer to the center, which is fine, but look what happened on the bottom. See, they came up right up against the edge, which is exactly what I didn't wanna do because with them this close to the edge, when I put the die in there and actually cut the threads, it's gonna actually cut some of the threads probably right into the back of here. So that is not what I want. So here's what I did. I went ahead and cut myself another block remove this one, all I needed to do was take a pliers and just kind of torque it a little bit and it popped right out. But I went ahead and I stuck in the new one, fitted exactly where the thing was positioned initially when I got the marks at the top of that because those marks are going to start up here but they're gonna end somewhere in the middle 
on the bottom of this one. So I already knew the position because I made the marks here. I, this is what I measured off of the plans. The one and one eighth back from the bulkhead to here comes to this one. So basically we're starting over again. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get this cleaned up. I went ahead and glued it in with uh, my favorite um, high intensity glue, this uh, Gorilla Glue. Um, because I like the way that it expands into the into the creases and everything and fills this whole thing up It'll stick nice and hard into there And then eventually the second step is going to be just like we did on the front here of the uh, firewall I'm going to take and put a couple of bamboo rods into the side of the rail because it's passing through plywood former on the sides here So it'll work really well as far as holding this all together So let me go ahead and get this cleaned up and then we'll go ahead and set the box down on top and um, or the wing back down on top of the saddle and we'll go ahead and um, pretty much redrill the holes again and see what we get this time hopefully i get it this time because this glue i don't know how nice it's going to be to uh, see if i have to remove this i don't think it'll be too bad but i don't want to have to do it right kitty This is the quarter by 20 tap that is put into my little tapping tool. It's just a little spin handle dealie. Um, go ahead and what you do is you center it up as best as you can into the hole. And then just very easily, you don't want to force this. You just want to very easily let it start cutting the threads. You can see that this tap right here, what that's doing is it is going to reach into this drill bit hole that we made and it's going to start cutting threads into the maple. And you just very slowly, I know some guys I've seen do this, they chuck it into a drill. Oh my gosh, I don't know how it even works, but they get it to work some ways. Um, just continue to work this through. And every now and then I like to back up just a little bit. Let it recut the thread it just cut. And that's very important, especially if you're working in like metals, like aluminum. You have to use a special oil uh, because it will just rip right through it and just make it a, a smooth, smooth bore. It doesn't do that with wood as much, which is why I like tapping wood a lot better than I like tapping aluminum or other metals. Okay, so as you can see, the entire die has pretty much, or the entire tap has pretty much run back all the way through. So let's go ahead and back it all the way out now. And we'll go ahead and test it with one of the uh, bolts we're gonna be using just to make sure everything fits okay. Okay, so this is going to be one of the bolts that's going to go in. And it threads very nicely, very smooth, 
no hang-ups, and it is indeed threaded in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that one, and then we'll go ahead and um, reset the wing back on here. And I'm going to drill out the holes on the wing top so that the bolts could pass right through it and then go right into the thread. And so I've gone ahead and tapped this one. Let's go ahead and test it really quickly, see if we get the same result. Looks like we do. Okay, perfect. So now the next step is we're gonna work over the wing. We're gonna drill out the holes that are on the wing to one quarter so that this bolt will pass right through it and meet right into the uh, threaded part here. And that's, we don't need it to be threaded in the wing part because the wing is, the part that's being held on there, it does no good to thread all the way through that uh, balsa block. So we just need the hold down piece to actually have the threads in them. Well, here we go. It's not even that much more diameter than the 1364s. Okay, let's test it out and see if it fits. Yep, look at that, passes right in there. Comes out the bottom. Now here's the part that kind of concerns me a little bit. Um, you can see how the, can you see that? If I got it raised up so, okay, you can see where it sticks out there and it's not very far. Um, I'm hoping that that's enough right there. However, here's the part that I didn't like about the angle to begin with. See how the head of this screw is kind of got a big gap here and it's tight up against the body here. I think what I'm probably gonna end up doing is carving away at the base in the back there so that this can actually seat down about another, it looks like it'll go down about another eighth of an inch. So, and it's resting, it's got that block of balsa underneath this part of the wing. So it's got something to rest on nicely. What I'll probably end up doing is cutting it away so I could set it flush and then maybe even putting like a little uh, plywood, ball, uh, plywood plate underneath it to keep it from, you know, eventually squishing that balsa down underneath there. So these are things I'm gonna work on, but first I wanna see if, maybe there's enough thread right there to thread it just the way it is, but I, I still don't like that big old gap right up in the front. We'll fix it, don't worry. Okay, I'm not gonna kid you. Putting these things in for the first time is always very difficult. But here we've got them pretty much set into place. Uh, I'm gonna loosen them up though before I put in that back set. So we're just gonna loosen them. I think it's probably gone in there about four threads deep, which is plenty. Oh, Lordy. Yeah, we're gonna have to cut those out just a little bit to make those. These are such a snug fit. That back's gotta come down for that second set. Okay. All right. So there we have it. First set is done, the front set is done. So now I'm pretty much gonna repeat the same process with the back, putting them exactly where the plans show that they mark up on there. Four bolts is not my favorite system for uh, mounting a wing. Uh, most of the time I like putting a dowel, maybe two dowels in the front here and sinking them into the firewall. But this particular plan calls for four bolts to, molt down, to hold down the wing. So we're going with it. <laughs> And uh, I'm gonna straighten this up. I do not like having them like this. This is the way the plan shows to. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut part of this out so that I can countersink that down so that it'll make it flush. That's just uh, personal preference on there, but I think it'll look a lot better. And I think I like having the stress of the um, force on this top being equal instead of just mostly in the back here and nothing in the front. To me, that just sets up for possibility of wanting to snap this bolt head right off. So that's not what we want to do. Anyways, I'll go ahead and fix that up and uh, that'll be neatened up in uh, uh, finishing work here. Hey, thanks for coming back to the shop again. I'm really making an effort to try to, you know, speed up the process of this and, and try to shorten up these videos. I don't 
I have no idea how long this one's going to be, especially with that blown step and the rebirth of it. But uh, anyways, uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for all your great comments too. I really enjoy all the different comments and there's a lot of questions and I try to help you as best I can uh, with those comments. So if you have any questions about what's going on with building this plane or other suggestions, please feel free to drop me a, a comment down below and as I see them and if I know the answers to them, I'll give them back to you. But uh, I really just really enjoy all of the different comments I've been receiving and, and the uh, people I've been talking to and meeting about the, uh, meeting with over the, you know, we're just sending back messages back and forth. But it's a lot of fun and I really enjoy it. And I think we're up over, I think we got like 1,600, maybe 16, 1,600 uh, subscribers right now. So if you know somebody else that is interested in building model airplanes, please tell them to jump aboard with us. and. Uh, Hopefully this one will be off to the covering here pretty quick. I'm, uh, I've had a lot of other projects going on and, and uh, actually uh, about three weeks ago I caught COVID and that kind of slowed me down a little bit. It didn't really do any serious damage. In fact, I've had some colds that were worse than this was, but it just made me feel like, you know, it, it's, it's kind of cold out here in the shop in the winter time and I really didn't feel like dealing with any of the um, I, I just had a real bad cold intolerance. I didn't feel like being out in the cold and it kind of zaps your energy level. That's what it did for me anyways, but back up to about at least 98% at this point. And um, I want to finish this plane because spring is a coming again and I really want to get this plane up in the air and uh, that's my goal. So see you around next time. <laughs>